INL is celebrating its 75th anniversary, and we're here at the Materials and Fuels Complex for a behind the scene exclusive look at the important work that goes on here. So in the background, you see the EBR, which is the Experimental Breeder Reactor 2 dome. And this reactor was a breeder reactor where you have a driver fuel on the inside and then blanket fuel on the out. And in the building next to it, the fuel cycle facility was used to reprocess that fuel. It is actually still used today to reprocess that fuel. And then you could take fuel that was spent, reprocess it, and then place it back in that reactor. And so EBR2 ran until 1993, I believe, um, successfully doing its work and putting power to the grid out here, powering MFC and, and putting additional power to the grid. The EBR2, I would say, was probably the most successful test reactor ever in terms of the scope of things that were accomplished. EBR2 was a very successful test reactor, but probably the most important contribution was demonstration of the ability of reactor systems to protect themselves without safety systems activating. On April 3rd, 1986, Two historic nuclear safety tests of worldwide impact were conducted on Argonne's EBR-2. The purpose was to demonstrate that this kind of reactor is inherently safe and incapable of a nuclear meltdown. What was interesting about that display was that a month later the Chernobyl accident occurred and we gained a lot of attention and I think set the stage for the modern advanced reactor designs that are more inherently safe. All right, I'm outside of the experimental fuel facility and we're gonna go see Patrick Hogan, who's gonna give us a tour inside. Well, this facility is our experimental fuels facility. We, we make experimental fuels, so advanced fuels. And so there's lots of different types of reactors uh, out there, both uh, reactors that are existing and reactors that are uh, new concepts. And they all have different types of fuel. At the facilities here at MFC, and this facility in particular, uh, one of the things that we can do is make a wide variety of types of fuels. We do that to help people that are working on developing the reactors of tomorrow. And then with other fuels, uh, we're working on how to uh, new manufacturing processes to make the fuels perform better, to make the manufacturing process more efficient, reduce waste, and those kinds of things to make just general improvements on the manufacturing processes themselves. Welcome to the Sample Preparation Laboratory. We're going to be heading in with Ron Crone, who's the Associate Lab Director for the Material and Fuels Complex. You, you look at the past and this whole reactor site, as, you, as I look out to the west there, you know, we demonstrated over 50 reactors. And what's really happened is the lab itself, and MFC in particular, is now going to be the reactor test bed again. But not only do you have the ability to test the reactors here, now you have all the ability to do the research, development, and qualification of the fuels and materials so you can really get this advanced reactor fleet moving. But building reactors, testing reactors, that's the heart of what INL did for many, many years, and we're getting back to that. Ron Crone showed us the EBR2 reactor control room before we met with Aaron Balsmeyer from the National Reactor Innovation Center to learn about the new microreactor test bed being constructed inside of the dome. So dome is demonstration of microreactor experiments. And so you think about micro reactors are going to be less than 20 megawatts, so 20 million watts or less. These uh, micro reactors, they're transportable on existing semi trailers where you could take and set up and have several megawatts of electric power that can run that operation, either an industrial facility or a mining operation or a remote community. And so I think it's vital to getting people off of diesel generators onto clean electric power. Nuclear power can save the world if we let it. There's so many problems that can be solved with nuclear power and especially advanced nuclear power. And so I think it's crucial to our community and our country to, demo, uh, to show that these kinds of technologies can work and that they're safe and effective. 